Hey there. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join us for another installation of Virginia Arts Waiting in the Wings. In previous episodes, we've featured arts and performance entities, and we discussed how COVID-19 has impacted their organizations. Well, this time around, we wanted to speak to those in the performance field who've probably been affected the most, the artists and performers themselves. How has this pandemic affected their livelihoods and what suggestions do they have for others in the same situation? On the panel today, we have several locals that you may recognize. Rachel Blankenship Tucker, singer songwriter and member of the all female trio After Jack. Johnny Camacho, comedian, producer, and founder of the Roanoke Comedy Lab. Brian Harvest Black Hancock, writer, actor, musician, and host of Soul Sessions Roanoke. Shalene Powell, violinist with the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra. And JD Sutphin, singer songwriter and frontman of the Nashville Recording Group. The the low, low chariot. Thanks to all of you for joining me. I know that this year has been a tough one for all of you, not just personally, but professionally as well. Gigs and shows canceled, venues closing down. Uh, Rachel, let's start with you. Um, you and your uh, bandmates, Emily and Catherine, you've chosen to halt all performances until it's safe to tour again. And you say that uh, that's, that's just a bit rough on all of you. Um, how's it been going? Well, <laughs> wow, what a year. Um, you know, in, in March, we had uh, just opened for the Indigo Girls at the Harvester Performance Center. We had a ton of momentum going. We were going to be in the studio this year because we have a brand new bandmate and COVID hit. And it was immediately clear to us that we had to stop. Like we, we didn't feel comfortable asking people to come out to our shows. We didn't feel like it was safe to ask people to gather to hear our music. And we'd never want to put any of our friends or fans in harm's way. So we just decided to stop. Wow. Uh, JD, let's go to you because you're also in a band, uh, a nice, uh, very popular band. Uh, how did things change for you guys? It was Unbelievable. Uh, you know, we, we were gearing up for the biggest year uh, of our career. We had uh, two performances uh, set with the CMA Fest in Nashville. We didn't even get to announce that we were going to be playing before it was canceled. Uh, we were going to be touring all the way to Texas and back. Uh, all of this stuff. So, you know, when it was all shut down, it was really hard. Um, but it was one of those things that um, I, I try to be as positive as possible, no matter what, you know, the situation. Uh, so we've taken this time, uh, not only, you know, to personally, you know, grow, but we've never written more music either. So we try to make the best out of the situation regardless. Brian, uh, how about you? I know you're part musician, actor, instructor, a little bit of everything going on. How have things uh, changed for you? Uh, it's definitely been about adaptability and uh, just doing my part as far as trying to reflect the times that we live in, whether it be writing, whether it be um, just trying to do something inspiring and trying to still safely gather, but uh, just taking the time out to just like meeting people where they're at and, you know, just, you know, being brave enough to say, okay, this is where I'm at right now artistically and just spend time you know, just writing and still sharing music, still sharing content and a lot of DoorDash and a lot of now. Right, right. Uh, well, let's stay on the music track. And Shalene, uh, you are a violinist with the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra. I know that a lot of those performances were canceled. Um, what about you? So, um, first of all, it's so fantastic to be on. I'm humbled to be on, on the call and on this group there's so much talent here. Um, I hope some of it rubs off over here. Um, <laughs> let's see, we, uh, everything pretty much hit a wall as far as um, performance for the symphony goes um, because of the size of the group and the number of performers on stage, everything has just been stopped. Um, and I think the last performance was back in February and we played Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. And I remember fast forward to maybe Towards the end of summer, I was listening to public radio and Beethoven's Fifth came on and I just started crying because I could I couldn't remember rehearsing those sections with David Stewart Wiley and my my stand, my partners, and it was it was really um 
it kind of just hit me all at once, you know, that moment. Um, so, so yeah, everything's on pause. There's another program that the symphony has, which is wellness arts. And it's a, uh, a group of lo local musicians with the symphony go to Richfield and we go and we play and we do music therapy sessions at Brandon Oaks. And I really miss playing with those residents. Um, I miss seeing them every month. I miss um, bringing, that, bringing out certain aspects of, of personalities and, and hearing about their week. Um, so for the symphony, everything's really stopped. I feel like in our community, um, in our whole region, the RSO always brings a lot of holiday cheer. Yeah. So, Absolutely, absolutely. Johnny, you are a comedian uh, and also mm. a producer. So um, things a little bit different for you, but I bet you also very similar, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I'm sure every artist feels this way to some extent, but stand-up comedy is so beholden to that classic, in-person, immediate audience performer dynamic. Um, if you don't have that, you can still produce art, you can still create content, but I hesitate to call it stand-up comedy. So everything I know about the art form is impossible right now. Um, everything I know about producing a show and putting 200 people in a room together to watch an act and share laughter um, has kind of been put on hold. But the good news is that I am as optimistic about comedy and its future today than I was this time last year. Oh, wow. So, well, let's, let me stay with you because now I'm curious as to what, if anything, where a lot of the musicians can still do virtual, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook Live, that kind of thing, and sort of get, you know, whether it's donations or whatever the, the case is. Totally. Have you been able to sort of go down that road considering that you don't have that live element? Um, you know, there are, there are definitely avenues. Uh, the, the internet has democratized everyone's ability to sort of make their voice and their art uh, heard and uh, allow it to be seen by a lot of different people. Um, again, like there are some great like Zoom shows happening right now. People are live streaming comedy sets. For me, it really is about that missing human element. It's like I can stream my act into your living room, but without that feedback, without that in-person real-time relationship, um, the, the game has changed to a point where I don't even recognize it. So there are people out there um, adapting. I've chosen for my own part to you know scale back live performances, let go of hosting the mic until I feel good about assembling people uh, to, to watch it live. Because I do believe as artists right now, we have, to be, uh, we have to be representatives. We have to show a lead by example through our own sacrifice. And I, I personally don't want to be associated with an event that becomes a super spreader. Um, you know, I, 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 I am writing. I look forward to the day I can get a bunch of people in a room to see comedy again, but I'm playing it safe until then. Rachel, you mentioned in some of the notes that I was reading that um, you, you said it, that, that this whole process and how things are going has completely removed the momentum of you as an artist, as a band, and that's very detrimental to you in many ways. How so? Well, momentum is everything. It's it's everything. It's like a like a snowball. You know, you start out at the top of the hill with a tiny snowball, and as you get momentum, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's that's the way that it goes. I mean, you get in front of more people. You know, the your band name gets out there. It's 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 everything. And when that comes to a halt, you have to start over. And you know, we had just started over with taking a half of a year off with a new bandmate. You know, to have a to to have her into rehearsals and getting things going and. And we were just getting going again. And I don't know, it's sad, it's, it's hard. Um, JD, because I know you also, you, you started and you're the, uh, the owner, I guess, founder of Big Lick Entertainment. So you and Johnny, and I know Brian, you also sort of produce these big events. Um, how has that, obviously, we know that that has stopped, but how does that affect your livelihood? It's, it's a big thing. I mean, especially with, when it comes to Big Lick Entertainment, all of our outdoor festivals um, that we do, all of the concerts uh, at Elmwood Park, at Devil Town Center, a minimum of 51% of every single one of those events goes to charity. So it's not about my livelihood. We're okay. Right. But we raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for local charities, for nonprofits, for everything from kids that need coats uh, to homeless shelters, to drop-in centers, to food, and so much more. 
And most of those nonprofits are doing everything that they can to just stay afloat right now. Uh, my, it is not about my company, you know, whatsoever. We're, we're, we're okay. It is definitely hard when you have that kind of money lost and it's really hard on my staff because, you know, all of my event staff, I've got 12, you know, 14 different people that work for us uh, throughout the year on those events and they've had no hours. Yeah. There's, there, there hasn't been anything for me to, to give them to do. Um, and it's, it's really hard on those folks. Brian, I noticed that you have a lot of your content online. You are one of those that yeah. a lot of creatives, a lot of artists have moved to an online platform. Um, ha has that worked for you? Is that still helping you kind of get yourself out there? Yeah, and uh, the thing that we've been doing is partnering with places like The Spot on Kirk, who has been very instrumental in uh, – uh, teaming up with me in the Grandin Theater as well, where we've done events that have been safe for people to come out. Uh, Grandin Theater uses checkered board seating and it's for spoken word nights. And um, also just keeping in mind that like uh, like the last event we had was called My COVID Coat Mixtape. And, you know, they use a checkered board seating pattern. And, you know, right now it's just been a place where we continue to just get people back in the human ex experience. I feel like right now it is an artist's duty to continue to like connect people. And, and like I said before, we're kind of reflect the times and have people just know who they are as artists or as just, you know, as people, you know, figuring out, you know, who we are, why we are and why now it's just a great, it's a, it's, it's a very tricky time and it's a very scary time, but sometimes we have to really embrace our craft and push the needle forward still, even with the things that we see, not to be afraid that, you know, there's no such thing as comfortable. There's never been a such thing as comfortable. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a thing where we have to take risk even when we ourselves don't know what to do. I, it's it's uh, to connect people and get people into a human, an experience of saying, Hey, I feel this, I feel this too. I, I'm going through these feelings too. I've gone through anxiety myself. Personally, I deal with depression. I deal mm -hmm. with uh, the fact that I overeat and, you know, I've been going through this emotional roller coaster of trying to strip off my anxiety to, to, to be a better performer, to be a better human. Um, it's, it's important to realize our gifts and continue to push those gifts forward, you know, especially locally. I see people on this panel like JD and Johnny and everybody, and they're doing such great work and it's such instrumental work um, that helps uplift this community and shows them that we can do it right here. And, and that's a beautiful thing. Good answer. I like that. Very nice. Very well, well said. Shalene, I know that uh, you're a musician, you're the, a violinist, and I know that your husband is also a musician and local restaurateur. Um, so it, it sounds as though you have other sources of income and you're probably doing okay, but how are you and, and maybe even your husband as musicians uh, using this time to sort of, you know, come out at the other end successfully? I'll, I'll speak for myself first. Um, you know, for me, I've used music because there aren't any gigs um, on my calendar. Um, I've, I've really used music for more therapy, if anything. If I'm, I'm having a day or there's something in the news or I'm just, you know, I have two small kids. If I'm just like at my wit's end, I will just go and I will play and I'll just grab something and just play. And that's been really helpful. I think what I see too, I have a lot of colleagues in the symphony that are teachers. And one thing that has translated really well through this COVID era is teaching. You know, everybody's, you know, you, you can literally take your phone out and just kind of have a little session with your students. So I do know that that livelihood income of stream of income has been there. Um, I don't have students right now because I do have a part time, another part time job beyond the RSO. Um, but I think there's a lot of creativity going on. Uh, my husband's band is called My Radio and 
they've written a lot of music. Um, they haven't been able to perform it per se, you know, out in public, but it is something that there's going to be a new album coming out. So that's exciting. Um, also maybe former bands for his former bandmates have been getting together and, and kind of getting together and kind of doing some virtual stuff and pushing it out. Um, so some of our alma mater, um, we met at Berkeley college of music up in Boston. And so he, we've gotten together with some alum that way. Um, wow. so I think it's been, therapeutic. I think it's been creative. And on the other end of this, I really, I truly believe there's going to be another renaissance, if you will, of where music is really going to help heal and like allow the community to come together and, and people kind of propel forward. Amen. I like that. I like that thought. Johnny, with you, I mean, you, you're kind of, you're not in a band situation. You don't really have to rely on other people. You're sort of that solo stand-up comedian. Right. I would uh, think that this downtime maybe gives you opportunity to write, you know, that the creative juices maybe start flowing. Is, is Absolutely. that? And it's like beyond just being a, a producer and a, a comedian, like I, I consider myself a student of comedy in the very academic sense. Um, like there have been major movements and eras of comedy. There have been high points and low points and the brightest spots in comedy. And I think the world of art at large, the brightest spots throughout history have followed times of intense turmoil and strife. And right. 2020 has been a sort of crucible of political strife, economic uncertainty, a global pandemic. People are worn down to their most raw emotional selves. And I think that when the healing commences, a byproduct of it is gonna be some of the coolest, gnarliest art uh, we've seen in decades. Amen. I, <laughs> I love it. Well, Rachel, that goes to you. Uh, are you using this time for songwriting, for your creative? What, what, how are you using this time? Well, to be honest with you, I am just trying to take care of myself. <laughs> my, my mom uh, contracted COVID at the, at the very beginning of this, and it was a big eye-opener for us. Um, so what I'm doing is watching my son um, and taking care of him and focusing on him right now. Yay, mama. Yeah. <laughs> take care of yourself and your, your family. Absolutely. I get yeah. that. Well, so, um, so how are we moving forward? How, how do we, um, uh, and it, you know, it's so hard to plan because, you know, we may face more quarantining and things are still happening. So it's, I, I hate to ask you to sort of predict the future mm -hmm. if you will, but, um, what would you like to maybe see happen on, on the other side? Let's go with JD. Well, you know, we got to host our Comic-Con. To uh, now, it's been a, a few weeks ago. It was Halloween weekend, and I was really on the fence about it because it was supposed to be um, in August, and I knew that we'd only be about four weeks into phase three. So we met with the city, we met with health officials, we talked to other event promoters, we looked at what Disney World was doing because we figured if there's a, a place as giant as Disney with as much on the line as them, what were they doing? And we knew that we had to not do what was being asked, we needed to do about two and a half times that. We weren't required to check temperatures, we needed to. We needed to not just do uh, the 50% capacity, let's go even lower than that. Let's be as hardcore on mask as possible. Uh, we got a hospital grade disinfection throughout the event. Mm. And I, I did not work, and I worked the event the entire weekend, I did not have to ask one person to put a mask on but it was all about how you talk to your customer. And it was because throughout those weeks, as we were getting into phase three, I kept getting people ask me, please put this event on. My kids want to go. I feel mm -hmm. comfortable. And we had to listen to our community. And that's number one. But the thing that we said, instead of saying, you have to do this, you have to do that. We said, we're not producing this event. We are. You have to walk in tandem with us and be as responsible as us so that this can happen or it won't ever happen again. Because we only got one chance to try this the right way. Right. Um, and it, 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 was, it was unbelievable. I mean, I, I had people, vendors that come to this event that sell comics that sell toys and stuff like that, um, that were so emotional that they got to just be out. Right. And make a living again. I mean, I, ha I had vendors crying at me that they said they didn't think they'd be able to afford a Christmas for their kids, but they got to get one event in before the holiday season happened. It was unbelievable. I, I went into my office at the Birdland Center probably three different times on Saturday and bawled my eyes out because it was just 
it was amazing. I forgot what that feeling was like. And I feel like the biggest thing that's drove me crazy about all this, people saying social distancing, they should have said physical because we can't lose this. We can yeah. still connect on a Zoom. I can still get just as emotional and laugh and cry and get pumped up as I do when I, every single time I watch a, a, you know, a Marvel movie, I still get the same feeling, Shawshank Redemption, whatever I'm doing. <laughs> but we have to be engaged with each other. Absolutely. Social. And I kind of want to still be far enough apart to be okay. <laughs> right, 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 right. And I kind of want to go back a little bit to what Shalene said about the mental health aspect. You know, uh, it Absolutely. sounds like most of you are able to sort of use your craft to kind of get through those emotional when you're down, when you're depressed, whatever the case is. Uh, and Brian, I'll come to you because you, you were kind of the first to mention it, but um, mentally, mental health, speaking about mental health, how, I know you're helping yourself, but I know that music and art and comedy can also help others. Um, yeah. Talk we're, about that. We're in a place where we have to realize that we're on a break. And with that, we need to work on being our own breakthroughs and mm. self-discovery. We're so used to this this rush zipping around. I, I, know, I know for myself personally, I, I, I'm always like going. Sometimes I only average like four hours of sleep and I'm always wanting to write. I'm always wanting to run. This season has taught me that I have to sit still and investigate and pull some, shed some skin and really figure out who I am. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's really an artist's job to find out who you are, why you are and why now. And to, to find out, to unlock those, those gems that are just sitting inside of us we really need to take the time to just like chill out and, and, and encourage each other and encourage our public, mm -hmm. encourage the people that we, we, we serve, you know, to have a gift to give in, in as far as service and as far as creation, you know, and having these ideas transcend cultures, those are very important things. And it's important to just enjoy the time that we were having and, and, and not take this season for granted because it's very uncertain, but we're, we're still the gatekeepers of the truth as far as being artists, uh, uh, musicians, uh, motivators, movers and shakers. We're the gatekeepers of the truth and it's time to really investigate what it means to, 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 to continue to be that torch and pass that to people who really need it right now. So if, if you make a joke or if you sing a song you know this is definitely your time you know it's definitely a time to be inspired by what you can also give that back because we need the scene right here locally fueled we need that so we can just be on more to uh basically provide comfort and then also it helps provide comfort as well well, I have about three minutes left and I want to give you each a chance to sort of close us out. But Rachel, I wanted to come to you because I've, I've known you for a long time now. And I know that uh, it, it was tough when your mother did, uh, you know, contract uh, COVID and dealt through that. Did you use your music at all to help you get through through all of that? Yes and no. Um, because of the loss of, of the our music in general, you know, traveling and playing on stage and stuff, it sort of felt like another jab, you know, to think about picking up the fiddle or the banjo or, and stuff like that. So yes and no, you know, later down the line, you know, I picked it up here. We've done a couple of little live streamy things, a song here, a, strong, a song there, but you know, it's, it's tough. It's, it's emotional for me. It, yeah, I, I, I would imagine. So I'll just start with you since we're with you and I will go around, but uh, what do you, what do you see in the future? What, what does the, well, it's, again, we don't know what the future holds, but uh, <laughs> what are you hoping to sort of accomplish in say, the next six months or so without well, knowing? I, I just want people to, to hold on and support artists that they care about and they know and support each other you know like i want to be friends with everyone on this zoom call i want to support your work i want to go to your shows i want to hear your comedy i want to do it all and and i want us to all imagine what it's going to be like when we get back on stage in front of an, uh, an audience for the first time like i have chills thinking about it already and i'm, I'm hoping that it'll it'll unite us all it'll push us all forward and we can all come out of this on the other side I love it. I love your enthusiasm. Shalene, what about you? 
Um, well, Lisa, thank you, because you've actually helped connect artists here across our little Zoom platform, and I agree, I agree with you, um, Rachel, on wanting to follow one another, um, even if we, we don't at this point already. Um, I, I will not take anything for granted when I'm performing, and I'm, that's not to say that I, I have in the past. Um, I've, I always love just diving into rehearsals and concerts and, and oh, got to turn the page or, you know, performing in the, in the pit with um, Opera Roanoke. Um, this is just going to make it that much sweeter once everything opens up. And we're, you know, when I first, when, when the orchestra tunes to A440 in the very beginning of the performance that's about to take place, you know, to me, that's very, everyone's already tuned behind stage, by the way. <laughs> so everybody's pretty much all keyed into like we're on tune, but there's something ceremonial about it with that 60 plus member group. And I'm like, I'm looking forward to that so much. Wow. Okay, Brian. Sorry, what's what, the question again? What's, what's the, the short future look for you, look like for you? Um, right now, I'm in the show writing a solo album. Uh, me and my band, we're actually uh, are prepping to start writing new music to perform. Soul Sessions is gearing up right now to basically um, do more virtual programming, doing some virtual zines for through our website. And uh, right now, it's just a season of uh, creating. I'm also writing my, my personal poetry book called A Blue Collar Love. And um, just having on. Just, uh, just having fun right now and just uh, working hard. Taking time to be creative. I absolutely love it. JD? Yeah. I've never had more Saturdays with my son and my wife. It's been incredible because, I mean, normally I was either putting on an event or playing a show or being out of town. And uh, this past Saturday, I actually uh, had to have my first show or got to have my first show back in Nashville. It was socially distanced. Everybody wore masks and uh, the promoter did it right. Um, and everybody was spaced out. And it was such a, a high but then the second that last note hit and I walked up the stage, I didn't know how long it was going to be until the next time. Oh. Um, and I made sure that I stayed up as, po as late as I possibly could that night. And I just kept writing because it was still just resonating in my head. And yeah. um, I can just tell that there are songs there that I haven't even had the time yet to get in front of my, my guitar or whatever it is I'm going to use uh, instrument wise. Um, and, and it's just time to reflect. It's time to write. It's time to grow. It's, not, it's nothing but up from here. It's nothing but up. Yes, Johnny. Well, Quick. you know, uh, this year I, I had uh, I had a whole multi-day comedy festival lined up with sponsors, venues. Um, you know, uh, to whatever extent next fall uh, we can make any part of that happen. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. So my my short term, I think, is going to be uh, gauging interest from out of town headliners and seeing if venues are still on board. Hopefully, we have a vaccine. Hopefully, we can be safe about it. But uh, I'm I'm bullish on the future of comedy and comedy production. All right. Sounds good. Well, listen, thanks to all of you for being here and talking with, with me today. All of us here at Blue Ridge PBS wish you the best of luck and can't wait to see you in your various stages. So thank you again. And thank all of you for watching as well. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.